Do you want to be an intercessor? I most certainly do. If you also want to, then this program is especially for you. My name is Petri Patronen and I will be discussing with Pastor Michael Howard from Out of Africa Ministries concerning the very important theme of intercession. Does intercession really work? What does it take to be an intercessor? And why is it so crucial to start interceding now? We are presenting you a 12-part program and this is the second one. Out of Africa is an international ministry aiming at one goal, to win the nations to the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of intercession. Pastor Michael Howard is a revivalist from Africa with an apostolic calling. He has experienced time and again the power and impact of true intercession. Pastor Petri Patrini has been trained as a prayer warrior to lead the next generation and is heading up the intercession work of out of Africa in the nation of Finland. Last time we looked at the fundamentals of intercession and we learned that the main thing about intercession is your close relationship, your intimate relationship with the Lord. Today we're going to look at prevailing with God. Welcome Pastor Michael Howard. It's good to be here. Thank you. Good. So last time you, I, I just still want to return to some of the things that we spoke last time. And you, 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 you have an awful lot of emphasis on intercession in your teaching. And it's almost like intercession is the only thing that moves God. Is it really so or? Yes, it is. <clears throat> um, if we really think about uh, God, you know, people talk about a sovereign move or a sovereign act of God. Mm. Actually, there's no such a thing outside of the creation in Genesis that is a sovereign work of God because everything that God does is in response or the lack of response of his people. So revival doesn't just happen because God suddenly feels good about pouring out a revival on, on Finland or Britain. Uh, it, it happens because there's a people who knows how to touch the heart of God, prevail with God, and, and, and move upon God to operate. So you're saying, because we, I've heard a lot of teaching, and it's not been necessarily uh, said exactly like this, but the basic point has been that, okay, revival is something that God does, and we just wait for it, and, and we hope that it happens, and everybody's waiting for revival. I know in Finland, at least, we're really waiting for revival, but I don't know if many people are interceding. Absolutely not. <coughs> it's not just going to happen because we feel good about it, because some prophet comes and prophesies it, uh, you know, many people have been to different nations prophesying revival. It's not going to happen because they prophesy it. It's not going to happen because we want it. It's not going to happen because God even wants it. It's going to happen because there's a people who knows how to touch God and prevail with God for that revival. Okay. So you're talking about this prevailing with God. And intercession is prevailing with God. You said that. So how do you prevail with God? Is it sufficient that you just ask once or do you have to pray more? How, how do you do it? Well, I like to uh, liken intercession to, a, a, I will call it a holy mm. chess match. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> a holy chess match yeah, between holy, you and God. <laughs> between me and God. Okay. Right. And, mm -hmm. and God wants to be checkmated. Okay. And uh, I'm the one to checkmate him. And of course, there are, there are some definite tools that we use to do that. And, and God allows it. You know, uh, when God came down, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the, in the Hebrew language, it's very clear, it was a triune God that met Abraham uh, in his tent. And when God came, he said, shall I hide that thing which I shall do from Abraham, my friend? And uh, of course, he didn't hide it. He, he made very clear uh, to Abraham what he was going to do. And he wanted Abraham to stand in the gap before him. Uh, to stand before him and save Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, Abraham had certain tools that he could use, uh, certain things that he could present to God. Uh, could, could you maybe name a few? Well, for instance, if there be righteous. Okay. Uh, Lord, if there be 50 righteous. Lord, if there be 45 righteous. Lord, okay. if there be 30 righteous. All the way down to 10 righteous. Mm. And of course, his friendship with God was the key thing. The whole key thing in that element was, and what about me? God, I'm standing here between you and Sodom and Gomorrah. The problem with Abraham, he didn't go far enough. He didn't go far enough? <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying Abraham basically failed? Yes, he did. Hmm? And, and, and an intercessor can fail when, he, when he, he doesn't go far enough. 
I, you know, I, I believe that somewhere Abraham believed that there were at least 10 righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah, counting Lot and his, and his family, family yes. and, and his relatives. Um, and so I think that's why Abraham stopped. Uh, nobody's ever given a good explanation about that. You know, why didn't he go right through to one? Yes, Lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me just for one righteous person, can you save the city? Do you think yeah. God would have said no to him? I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No. So God, you, God, God would have absolutely, if, if Abraham had proceeded and pushed the issue right down to one, I believe God would have said, okay, for, for the sake of my friend, Abraham, I will do it. So you're saying basically that because somebody was such a close friend with God, that for the, only for that reason, uh, God could have saved the whole city. Why not? Abraham was an, um, as Moses was an incredible friend of God as well. Mm -hmm. uh, such a humble man, <clears throat> such a man of meekness, uh, yet he was so, so stood in the gap that he, when, when God had made up his mind to wipe out the nation of Israel, told Moses, I will make of you a new nation, Moses refused. And then pressed the issue to the point with God, if you're not going to send Jesus Christ, your son, the angel of the Lord, to lead us out of the wilderness, I'm not going anywhere. I refuse to move. I refuse to take this people anywhere. And God hearkened unto his voice. Wow. So we're moving back to the same thing, uh, relationship. Basically, uh, intercession is relationship with Lord, friendship with Lord, and uh, that is the key to everything. Yes, because, you know, if you look at, if you look at Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is, is, is the greatest intercessor that has ever lived. Don't mm -hmm. let, let's ever forget that. And uh, he is our prime example in all things. Uh, he's our standard. He's our hallmark. Everything about intercession we take from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he stood between God and man okay. uh, as the great intercessor, <clears throat> prevailed, pleaded with God, the, the fullness of his pleadings on the cross of Calvary. And, uh, and, and, and Isaiah the prophet, hundreds of years before, said that the Lord saw the travail of his soul and was pleased. So about this prevailing, I still want to know, so is it, is it basically, if, if it's about friendship, but still if you talk about like the technical aspects of intercession, so do you need to pray only once? If you're a good, good, uh, good a friend enough, you maybe you just only have to pray once and that's it? No, no. <clears throat> Abraham, again, there was that, that lifestyle. Uh, Isaiah the prophet in, in that famous chapter 6. Uh, let me read it. <clears throat> also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. But what had, what had preceded that? It was the living coals from off the altar touching the lips of this mighty prophet of God, who was already a mighty prophet of God. And yet, there was still self inside of him. There were still things. Uh, he, 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 had, he, you know, he looked at himself in the light of God's glory. And, and, and there was in him darkness. And, he, and, and, and that's when, Lord, touch, touch my lips with a burning coal. Purge me, mm -hmm. cleanse me, purify me even more uh, so that I may be that vessel. And then, of course, the Lord speaks these words. And here am I, Lord. Send me. Mm -hmm after the purging. So <clears throat> that's prevailing with God in intercession. That is uh, th th reaching a place where we absolutely touch God, where we have the assurance that I have God's attention, God's ear. Mm. Okay. So sometimes they've been teaching in the, in, the, in the body of Christ that you have to, if you pray more than once, it's unbelief. What do you think about that? No. That, 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 that kind of praying, you know, praying many times or, or, or Carrying something, carrying a burden would be in a way unbelief. Uh, no, I don't believe so. And, and, and Jesus speaks several parables concerning the fact that, you know, the, the, the man that went to uh, ask for bread and, and carried on imploring and imploring his neighbor, give me bread um, until, you know, well, I'm asleep with my children. No, but he finally implores so much that he gets up and he comes and he, he gives the neighbor what he wants. Um, and that's exactly what God is trying to say. It's, it's not sufficient to casually just ask once. And, and, and you see, this is the key. When we get into the heartbeat of God, God changes my heart mm. to line up with Him. Okay. And, and when God changes my heart, I'm no longer concerned about casual things, uh, profane things. 
I'm concerned about God, what do you want? Okay. Well, uh, that's an interesting thing. I still, still want to focus on because this, this truly is the, the main thing, uh, this friendship with the Lord. Because I know in Finland at least, the problem with the believers is like this servant attitude, that they have problems accepting that they're called to friendship with God, they have problems with intimacy with God, they, have, uh, they, they may be seeing themselves as workers for God, working for God, serving God, but necessarily not grasping God as a father or intimacy with God in, in a way that you're describing it now. So what would you say? You've been teaching about this, I know you've been teaching about this servant friendship thing, so. Let me say that, that whatever I do with the Lord, and that's the, that's, that's the emphasis, with so many people are doing things for the Lord. Whatever I do with the Lord is merely an expression of the residency of Jesus Christ, of God the Father, of the blessed Holy Spirit within me. Um, and I, I think we need to turn to the Word of God. And, and I, I love the portion of, of Scripture in the book of Exodus, speaking about the, 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 the servant the, that becomes the love slave. Okay. Uh, in Exodus uh, chapter 21, and if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, that's the issue. I love my master. Why wouldn't we love God with all of our being? I love my master. Why wouldn't he is my master. My wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl. No, didn't, you know, not like ladies today with a little hole <laughs> that they're going to hook an earring in. No. There, was, there was a nice round hole in the ear. It was bored Phew. through the doorpost. Now, the, the, the reason for that is very, very significant because okay. uh, no covenant can be made without the shedding of blood. That's part of covenant. Right. And, uh, and so forevermore, this, this man would have a hole in his ear. Everybody would recognize this is a love slave. There's a clear, large hole in his ear. His flesh is bored into the doorpost of the house. The trickle of blood is down the door. In this house, there is a covenant. And, um, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. No more going out free. If the, if the, 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 the wife and the children uh, were, were, were given to the master by, by the by the given to the servant by the master, then they stayed with the master. Again, that would stop the man from going out free. But you say, but doesn't seem this, this seem unfair of God, this mm -hmm. rule of God? No, because uh, if the man could not take care of himself in the first place, um, he couldn't take care of his, his substance. That's why he was owned by another man. If you owed a debt you could not pay, you were possessed by another man. And that's the issue. Um, we owe a debt we'll never pay. Yeah, true. He washed my sins away, not, yes. by, not by corruptible things as silver and gold, but by his precious blood. I owe him a debt I can never play. So why not be, a, by, be his love slave? Change from being a servant, change from being a steward to being the most incredible love slave. Then he's responsible for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a good deal. <laughs> of course it is. Everything with God's a good deal. <laughs> okay. Let me take this further in, in, yes, in, in please. John's. John's Gospel. Yes. You know, I, I think we need to to understand it very clearly. Uh, and I'm reading in John chapter 15 and verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And that's by all by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. There's a key. The servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Okay. Now, if you have the heartbeat of God, if you've paid a price to be in the heart of God, he's going to share his heart with you. You are no more a servant. You're a friend. Wow, that sounds amazing that, uh, you know, I could be in such a relationship with God that I would know, you know, the depths of his being, all his secrets. God loves to share his intimacy with us. And, you know, there's too many Christians who are off into that, what I call la la land, you know, uh, the, the visions and the dreams. And you, we don't need visions and dreams. If you have a vision and dream, let it be a real vision and dream from God. And, and you don't need too many of those to exist. I've had very few in my life. 
I'm talking about solid, intimate relationship that you are, you are transformed from being a servant into being a friend. And God will share. Shall I, shall I, shall I share with, with Abraham what I will do? Abraham, my friend forever. That's what the Bible calls him. Shall I not share with my friend what I shall do? So how can uh, just a regular Christian, how can, how can he start doing that? What would be the key? What would you start, give, give somebody a tip he wants? Okay, I want to be a friend of God, but I don't know how. What, what can I start doing? It starts out with obedience. You know, this is a key thing. If you take uh, that great, incredible chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews and substitute the word faith, with obedience. It was by obedience that these great and mighty men did these incredible things by obeying God. Uh, and, and here it is exactly. If you love me, you will want to, you will passionately desire to obey me. That's what John is saying. And, and, and if you love me and you obey me, then you will be my friend. Okay. That's the obedience. Like if you are obedient, is, is, uh, from that, does it result that you will fall in love with God, or is it the other way around? What would you say? Well, you, will, you cannot enjoy God if you're not obedient. Okay. Uh, grandparents cannot enjoy raucous grandchildren who are all, all rebellious and just doing whatever they want to do all the time. Um, you know, God can't enjoy us if we're going to do our own thing. So it, we've got to have obedience. It was by obedience, and, and obedience is learned uh, by obedience that these mighty, mighty men uh, did these great acts. It wasn't them who did them. It was God who did them. So in, in, in Hebrews 11, you mentioned Hebrew, Hebrews 11, and it talks about faith. So are you saying that faith is basically the same as obedience? Absolutely. Okay. So can you, can you then say, because Bible teaches clearly that we should pray in faith, ask in faith, uh, and if we believe, we shall receive. So basically, is, is this obedience, which, which is, you know, part of the love relationship, is this obedience then the key to, to get, uh, prevailing in prayer with God? Right. Uh, you see, let, let's go to John chapter 14. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in John chapter 14, uh, verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that doeth... He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works. That's not greater in intensity. That's greater in volume because there are so many Christians filled with the Holy Spirit. Greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, God is not giving us license to just ask for whatever we want, to you know, use it on our lusts. He's saying, once you become this love servant, this love slave, your heart, the passion of your heart, the burdens are going to change. And what you ask is going to be the burden of God's heart. And he'll, okay. not, and, and he'll not deny that. Okay. So, um, hmm. So basically, being obedient, I get to know God's heart. And from that on, I can know what God wants to do. And then if I ask what God wants to do, I'll surely get what, I, what I'm asking for. Absolutely, because all you'll be interested in is what God wants. Okay, what about, well, would, of course we have needs. So what about our, our, no, our known needs? Yes, God will answer them. Uh, automatically. Automatically, <laughs> yes. So I don't have to worry about myself. Asking in the will of God is asking the heartbeat of God, okay. asking the burden of God's heart. Do you know God has burdens on his heart? Mm. He has a burden to see the lost saved. He has a burden for those in the valley of decision. Okay. We have it in our prayer groups in Finland. We have this, uh, we usually in the prayer groups, people come with their own, uh, own prayer requests and what they want answers for. Like, uh, can you pray for this? Can you pray for that? And a lot of time in, in, in prayer groups is used for praying with, for personal subjects. So even, what would you say to such a prayer groups or such a, such a people uh, as an advice? Very shallow. <laughs> you would say it's very shallow. Very oh, you're, shallow. You're, that's going to get people offended. <laughs> Your passions and your desires will change uh, when God really comes into the equation. But it's, what about when somebody's sick or, or, you know, has a real need? You're thinking that God will answer even that if... if oh, uh, no doubt. God she or he will line up uh, uh, with God's, uh, God's, God's healed me and delivered me and set me free many times. When, even when 
you know, when I was desperate, I've been, there are times in Africa when I've been literally dying, uh, you know, I was on my mother's deathbed, but, but still the, the, the passion of my heart was the lust of the nations, the lust of Mozambique, the lust of, of the, you know, the continent of Africa. And, and as I was addressing that, even on my deathbed, God came down and totally delivered me in one word from his, from his word, Jeremiah. Thou shalt take many medicines, I hadn't taken any, but thou shalt not be healed. Get thee up to Gilead and take balm. And as soon as I read that, the presence of God came down into this dying body, I mean really dying body, and, and, and life just came back into it. <laughs> and, uh, that's incredible. And uh, that's God. Yeah. And uh, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying to people, don't pray for your loved, your loved ones. I'm not saying to people, don't pray for, for your sick. Uh, but, but I'm saying that's not part of intercession. Okay. So you're saying that in intercession, maybe uh, we should also, when we get a grasp of, uh, of uh, what is the will of God, and when we start lay down our own worries and our own uh, prayer requests and start praying for the will of God to happen, you're saying... Uh, that then we can be assured that God will answer. And maybe uh, we, we should stay and be t t more determined to pray longer and pray as long as we get the answer. Or what would you say? Intercession is absolute assurance that God will answer, that God will break through and do the thing that He says He wants accomplished. So if it's a revival of Great Britain, if it's a revival of the European nations, if it's a revival of your nation, mm -hmm. of Finland, and, and somebody is big enough to break through with God, get the assurance it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I remember interceding for my father uh, for his salvation. He was a tough military man, not interested in the things of God. and. Uh, I began to take on this burden and I began to really travail for him. It wasn't just an occasional prayer and hoping that God was going to. No, I really began to deal with God on, on the issue of my father. It took a year. And at the end of the year, my, the Lord said to me clearly, as with an audible voice, I've heard your cry. I will save your father. And from that moment on, I never prayed for my father one more time. It took him 23 years to get saved. And in 23 years, I never prayed once. To have prayed would have been unbelief. Okay, so after you, 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 you got the assurance, after, after you got, got the, the breakthrough, then it was unbelief. Yes. So it wasn't like you prayed once and that was it, but you no, prayed, 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 prayed. Yeah. It okay. was a battle. My father was a tough man and it was a real battle. And <laughs> sure. <you> know, <laughs> I met your father. <laughs> He's a tough man. <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> And uh, he broke through. I broke through and, 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 and he got saved. Now he's gloriously filled with the Holy Ghost and really on fire for the Lord. All right. So, you know, that, but at 20, 23 years. So after that, you can basically, after, after you've got the victory, how do you know? How do you know yourself? How do you know when you've got the victory, when you've prayed enough, when you, how that's do you a, know such? That's a really good question. First of all, you, you, though God speaks in many ways. Of course, if, you, uh -huh. if you're, you're asking me that question, you're asking, well, how does God speak to you? Okay. He can speak to you with sure. a, a still small voice inside. He can speak to you through the word, most powerfully through the word. He can speak to you with an audible voice. But most of all, you get that absolute assurance in the depths of your being that it's done. All right. Well, you've spoken, we've spoken about relationship with God uh, and intimacy with God as the Father, but there hasn't been many, uh, you haven't mentioned the Holy Spirit or Jesus Christ and all that. How does that, uh, what does that have to do with intercession? Well, a huge, huge matter because the Bible says very clearly that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us before the throne of the Father. The Holy Spirit works in us, making in intercession through us. So, uh, but I really want to spend a lot of time on that in, in another one of our discussions uh, on intercession because that's a vast, vast subject on its own and, and people really need to understand the working of the, of, the fa of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, the triune God in the whole uh, uh, subject of intercession, the power of intercession. Okay, we will pick up there next time. Now, if Pastor Michael, if you please could summarize uh, the main points of what, what has been taught today. Yes, indeed. Intercession is prevailing with God, uh, really coming through and prevailing with God. Uh, intercession is the only thing that really moves the heart of God. Uh, you know, I, I have no doubt about that. Intercession is being a love slave to the Lord. Intercession is total obedience to God. And uh, intercession is absolute assurance that God is going to answer.
Let's finish with prayer. Pastor Michael, could you lead, could you lead us with prayer? Yes, I, I think I really want to speak to the viewers today, and I want to tell you that perhaps the reason that you've never gone higher with God is because of this whole issue of obedience. There's something perhaps where you have plateaued out and you've dug your heels in and you've said no to God and you wonder why you don't have any spiritual growth and you, and you want to have something happen in your life. And I, I believe it's because somewhere you may have disobeyed God. I want to pray for you today. Father, we thank you that your son was so obedient. He came to do your will and to accomplish it. That was the greatest thing, Lord. And Father, we ask you today that you touch each and every person that is watching this. That Lord, where they have failed to be obedient to you, to be obedient to your call, Lord. To perhaps be, they have disobeyed a calling to the nations or, or to be involved in your full-time work or, or to lay something down when you call them to do that. Father, I ask that you touch them now. You are a forgiving God. You forgive and you wash, you wash us by your blood. I ask you, Lord, that you would wash each and every person that is in that situation of disobedience. Wash them by your blood. Cleanse them. You are forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and now if you will just say, Lord, whatever it takes, I'm ready to be it. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Touch me with your holy fire. Fill me with your fire. Uh, overwhelm my life. And Lord, send me for your kingdom and your glory. I am your vessel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Michael Howard. You're welcome. Next time we will look at the ingredients of intercession. Goodbye for now and see you again soon.